Hey, Pokemon Masters, Buggy Toby here, and we need to talk about the Titans. Okay, no, not those Titans, but we do need to talk about the Titans that are going to be appearing in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You might have missed this bit in the new trailer, but yeah, they announced that one of these story modes will have you going around with the character of, wait, is his name Arvin? Like, Commander Evan from Attack on... All right, okay, cool. The cool Titans, we get it, it's a good joke. We've done it before. But yeah, as I previously speculated, uh, one of our three plot threads is going around, uh, I believe it is the legendary Pokemon quest where we're going around looking for a special herb. This herb has actually appeared in other trailers as a herb glowing with light, radiating with the same light that I believe the terrestrial crystals glow with. And in fact, given that we know that the other plot lines are the gym challenge and then the Team Stars Evil team plot, this is, this must be the plot around terrestrial Pokemon, the terrestrial phenomenon, where it came from, and of course, legendary Pokemon. And on this quest, we will encounter the Titans of various areas. And of course, we know that the first of these is going to be Corf, an armored titan. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, rule of three. That joke's done. Okay. And you might be thinking, Toby, hang on, isn't this a little bit familiar? Didn't giant Pokemon appear in the games really recently? Like, really recently? Pokemon Sword and Shield features us going up against Dynamax and Gigantamax Pokemon. Pokemon that are bigger than they are usually. In fact, we've seen size variation in Pokemon for a while. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee featured it pretty prominently with some smaller and some bigger Pokemon. But on top of that, the phenomenon started earlier with Totem Pokemon, Pokemon that were irradiated by the light energy of Necrozma seeping through ultra wormholes. Even before that, Infinity Energy powered up Pokemon, causing them to change form into Mega Evolution. It's similar, but it is different enough. Still, Giant Pokemon, that's been around for a while. In Legends Arceus, for example, we also have Alpha Pokemon and then, of course, Noble Pokemon that are powered up by Arceus's power, becoming bigger. Haven't we all sort of, I don't know, done this before? To be fair, I kind of think this checks out. It lines up with what Pokemon has been doing for the last few generations from a lore point of view at least, but they can only really do it for one more generation. This is because all of the past four or five generations all culminate back to the same central topic. Arceus. I did a whole video on it recently. I know a lot of you saw on what the terrestrial phenomenon actually is, and I was talking about Arceus. Arceus is not just a Pokemon. It's also a term in alchemy, and no, that is a different anime, and we're not doing another anime opening. Anyway, alchemy. In alchemy, the Arceus comes in four parts. These parts are known as light, life, reflective, and chemical. If the chemical is Eternatus, a dragon Pokemon from space that's body makes up various meteorites, and it is part poison type, that would be chemical. Light, obviously, would be Necrozma, yet another legendary dragon that's made up of multiple parts to have a perfect form, that its body is separated into the Z-crystals that power up Pokemon, and then life would be Zygarde, a Pokemon that is literally the leader of the life and death trio that is, yet again, a dragon, and the mega evolution stones that change the form of Pokemon and power them up came from evolution stones that were irradiated where the ultimate weapon went into space and also have a connection to the Anastasity Sundial, which is thought to be a meteorite in the anime. It's a megalith that comes from space. So all of this thing, dragons, meteorites, space, their body, powering up Pokemon, increasing their size. This is something we've seen a lot before, and there's still that fourth part of the Arceus, which is reflective. And of course, the gimmick for this generation is terrestrial Pokemon. These crystal Pokemon, you can literally see the reflections of them in the terrestrial raid dens. Rocks, the body probably of a third dragon legendary Pokemon that goes between Maridon and Coridon. The same Pokemon whose head is in the crown and crystal, but it doesn't just change the Pokemon by their crystal form, but also increases the size of some Pokemon when ingested, not through a rock, but through a herb. The herb that you are going after in this portion of the story where you have to face off against the Titan Pokemon. And this isn't even that weird. In fact, it was referenced in the Isle of Armor because in the Isle of Armor, you could make Gigantamax soup, allowing your Pokemon the G-Max factor by stewing together Max Mushrooms. So plants can work for this as well, uh, an earth mineral or earth element of some kind. And of course, these plants are growing in the earth of the Paldea region, seeped in the energy of whatever this final legendary Pokemon is. So the last few generations have all been about combining together to create these four parts of the Arceus. Of course, we learned more about Arceus in Pokemon Legends Arceus, where we saw the noble Pokemon that were powered up by, yet again, a light that comes from 
directly Arceus itself. So in theory, noble Pokemon are, I'm guessing, even more powerful than, say, Mega Evolution or G-Max or Dynamax or, or Z-Moves when they are fully entrenched in that golden light and they are frenzy. In fact, Generations 1 through 4 felt very separate from everything that came after. Generations 1 through 4, the sprite art era, and I know you're going to ask me about Gen 5, we'll get to that in a moment. Gens 1 through 4 really felt like a natural progression from a region with magical creatures and mystical legendary birds up to, like, super legendary birds with Luke and ho -Oh, then on to controllers of the weather and the environment with Kyogre and Groudon, and then finally all the way up to the gods of time, space, and creation itself with Arceus. Then Black and White happened, and Black and White was supposed to be a sort of spiritual reboot for the series, featuring its main legendary Pokemon, Zekrom, Reshiram, and Kyurem, that were once a complete dragon Pokemon responsible for perhaps all of the dragon energy in the Pokemon world. Dragon energy, of course, is the thing that unifies Zygarde, Necrozma, and Eternatus, and I suspect the final third middle legendary of Scarlet and Violet. So this really is the end of an arc, the end of a thing that Pokemon has been doing for the last generation. I suspect this is the last time we're going to see giant Pokemon make an appearance. There is actually one other thing, and no, not the anime, that you might think about when you think of Titans, and those are the Regis. Regigigas, Ice, Rock, Steel, Drago, and Aleki. These Pokemon were once described as the legendary Titans, and were described once in the Crown Tundra as legendary Titans in the name of the quest that you're given, but outside of that, they're typically called the legendary Giants and Golems, as if the word Titan was being taken back by the Pokemon company and paired for use elsewhere in the series. I don't think the Regis are particularly connected to this energy or the things happening, but you never know. After all, Reggie Drago is said to be made from crystallized dragon energy, and this is the generation all about crystal Pokemon, but also, oh my goodness, it was made from Trastal. Whoa, little on the spot mini theory here. If Reg Ice is made of ice and Reggie Rock is made of rock and Reggie Steel is made from steel and Reggie Lecky is made from electricity, I guess, perhaps Reggie Drago is made not just from like the energy of the dragon type, but literally crystallized dragon energy as it appears there in the Pokedex entry because it was made from one of those terrestrial crystals that appears in the raid dens that was literally dragon type energy. Maybe that's how all the Regis were made, but certainly with Reggie Drago, that lines up with his Pokedex. A little on the spot Pokemon theorizing for you. That's how I do it. Totem Pokemon of all kind to have appeared elsewhere in the franchise as well. Obviously there's the classic animatronics from the Island of Giant Pokemon, but there was also that giant Dragonite in the anime well before that. Oversized Pokemon appear absolutely everywhere. But there's also something else that is important when it comes to Pokemon sizes, because yes, big Pokemon are thought to be more powerful because they are swimming in more of that infinity energy, life energy, terrestrial energy, whatever you want to call it. They're thought to be bigger and more powerful. But what does that about say about a Pokemon? given that they are biological creatures fueled by magical energy that has less of that energy. What happens to it? Well, my belief is it gets smaller. The opposite happens. And it gets smaller, and we know this because this is what we see when Professor Lavender is talking about a Pokemon's natural ability to shrink in size. I believe that a Pokemon's energy, its power, its ability to be stored, or its ability to become really, really strong, and its size, these things are all connected. But if you're seeing some dots that maybe I'm not seeing here, or maybe I've thought of, you've thought of a theory that I haven't, let me know in the comments down below. And um, by the way, I'm going to announce this now because I keep forgetting to do it. I'm going to be doing a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet giveaway. Of course I am. I'm going to be giving away one copy of each game. I will not announce the winner until the games are out, until the day of the game's release or the day before. I will announce it here on the channel in a video. Do not reply to any comments that say that, hey, you've won, click this link. There are unfortunately a lot of spam accounts like that out there. I don't want you clicking on any malicious links, so please be careful. All you need to do to enter is leave a like and a comment on this video, as well as any other future videos that I mentioned the giveaway in, and I will choose one of these videos and one person to win, or two people to win, one person to win a copy of Scarlet, one person to win a copy of Violet, and yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you all for watching, and of course, so I, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. A huge thank you to my Patreons who make this channel and Card Keeper Toby possible. And a huge shout out to the big patrons of this month Michael Hornshoe, The L Gator, Jed Rubin, and Navy Blue Suicune. Thank you.